Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, architect Shyamraj Chandra, representing Seventh Hue Architecture Studio. Before starting my presentation, I, I will start to uh, I will start like to start my presentation with the tagline: "A walk with nature will help you to receive more than you seek." Yeah. Uh, uh, as as a practicing architect in architect in Kerala, we are the major problem we are facing in uh, by getting the client and everything is like they will be telling two types of stereotyping uh, uh, houses. Like they will be asking for a traditional house or a contemporary house. So it's like uh, when we ask them what you mean by traditional house, they want sloping roof. We want wooden pillars, verandas, and everything. And and the counterpart when they ask uh, when we ask what do you mean by what you need by a contemporary house, we want box type houses. We want uh, uh, white, grays, and everything. Is that it about traditional architecture and contemporary architecture? So we have, uh, other than the celebrated uh, mansion houses, Naligat, uh, or the shopping roofs and everything, we had very beautiful concept like living inside out. At times, uh, people used to live inside their houses for eating and sleeping. Rest of all the activities were happening outside their house. They used to uh, treat guests outside the house. All the activities were surrounding uh, to the building. And they very beautifully incorporated, apart from the sloping roof and pillars, they very beautifully beautifully incorporated nature inside their building, you know, in na nature surrounding to the building. And the concept called Nadumutam, the, the way they used to bring the external nature, the elements of nature, sunlight, rain, and everything inside the house. And the elements of nature, like the water bodies, pond, and everything, it was surrounding to the uh, house. It was not inside the house, but it was surrounding to the house. But uh, and and the most beautiful concept called co-living was already established in our traditional architecture. The way the cover, the way they preserve uh, nature, the concept of padipura. They will not be having a boundary wall, but they will have a padipura. That is like we are entering into a property. It's the property we live. It's not the house. And what happens in the contemporary, uh, the, in the current uh, condition is the changing lifestyle, uh, small plots, small family, the material innovations like steel, glass, and something. So the change is inevitable. So we have to accept that and without losing the, uh, and what happens is like at the end of the day, we started seeing nature. And uh, the major change happened is we confined inside the houses and started to see nature through a window. So me, a person who is coming from a very uh, traditional background, like uh, from a village, these are the pictures I took from my own place. These are the, po the pond, this is the pond which I used to sweep. Like this is my hometown, my village, uh, small village in town. I'm a person who is grown up from seeing all these traditional values of the house. And when we got a project, in, um, maybe it's not one of, it's just one of my project. And, uh, uh, Kashish is our solution. It's not a solution, it's our way of interpreting the traditional architecture and the contemporary architecture. And uh, a walk with nature will help you to receive more than you seek. Going to the project, it is situated in Muduvara, Trishur, Kerala, 2.5 kilometers away from the busy state highway. It's like a village-like atmosphere. And the client is, a, a husband is an IT person, wife is an advocate, and they have two, two children, 10 years and seven years. And this is 20 cent of plot, the client uh, and we uh, together uh, decided we have to uh, construct the uh, house in 10 cents of land and we have to leave the land as it is, the natural landscape. We have lots of plants, trees and everything in the land. We wanted to keep the rest of the 10 cents as it is. And while putting a building in the 10 cents land, in the 10 cents land, we wanted the continuation of that existing landscape inside the, to, to build the connection between the, the existing landscape and the current building. We we wanted to incorporate a beautiful, we decided to incorporate a beautiful courtyard. And the concept was to camouflage the building inside the, the re existing landscape. Slowly, slowly, uh, it should get camouflaged inside nature. So the external climate effects, only the west side of the building uh, was highly exposed with uh, uh, natural uh, elements and everything. So we provided a curtain wall with palm, uh, palm wood. And uh, which ensures the safety, security, it acts as an ele uh, external element. We have a very small road only. There is no, not much uh, importance for the elevation and everything. The house is not visible from the road or something. So it is a very confined home. It should get camouflaged inside. So the curtain will be provided for uh, getting safety, privacy, security, and as an architectural element. So sloping uh, roof is an obvious element in a tropical region. So uh, instead of going on traditional uh, terracotta roofing, we preferred some mod uh, a modern material called sandwich panel roof, but we ensured the slope uh, for draining out water. And wooden louvers were uh, inspired from the traditional architecture. Wooden louvers were uh, introduced to ensure maximum sunlight and airflow. 
So this was the core concept. The building gets camouflaged in nature uh, when it grows. The building should grow with the client and it should grow with the surrounding. And from all these trails, we uh, decided to put a central courtyard with all the elements of nature. Like we wanted a pond, we, uh, we introduced a, a court, um, plants, trees, and what everything inside the courtyard, which is highly inspired from the traditional Kerala Nadumutam. And this is how the plan developed. It's a very simple plan. The whole area is uh, arranged uh, surrounding to the Nadumutam. We have a central access and uh, one active core, the living dining kitchen, uh, the, as, a, as the part of the modern living conditions, living dining kitchen is together. So this is the active core where the family is uh, uh, living together. And we have uh, two private cores, one uh, the bedroom, two bedrooms, one master bedroom and uh, one is the parents' bedroom. And this is the breathing this is the reflection of the existing landscape. Uh, we try to bring the same landscape, the indigenous plants and everything inside the house. So this is an extended court. It's a continuous courtyard. We are entering the uh, lower portion. That will be an ex uh, outer courtyard. We have a transition space in, in, in between the outer space and the inner space. We wanted to blur the boundaries between inside and outside. And the concept of Padipura we brought in the transition space. And we have the car porch inside. This is how the zoning came. And com coming to the first floor, we have two bedrooms and a live, upper living. We have uh, we purposefully created two vertical shaft to ensure the conversation between the ground floor and the first floor. And the staircase was purposefully placed inside the courtyard to ensure that whenever they move from the ground to the first, they should uh, feel the co uh, courtyard always. So courtyard acts as the heart and lung and whatnot about the house. We wanted it to be lush green. Uh, all the elements of nature, it, it should be, and at the same time, the client wanted it to be protected. Otherwise, it, it will not, they will not be giving it us, the, uh, us, us the freedom of uh, exploring all these kinds of things. So we kept the courtyard secure and safe, and this is how the you can see the courtyard is cam um, flanked. Uh, the living and dining spaces, the active core is flanked between two courtyards. On the left side, we have two bedrooms, the ground and first, all the balconies, all the views are focusing towards the courtyard. And in the first, uh, on the right, we have the staircase moving through the courtyard. And what happens is like the courtyard, we kept it uh, as porous as possible. So it, it will give privacy, protection, safety, and everything. At the same time, a clear view from the house will be, we will be getting a clear view from the house towards the existing landscape. This is how the building turned up. Play the video, please. So this is our project, Kashish. The vertical louvers with palm wood. As you can see, the building got camouflaged inside the uh, landscape. The transition space, we used very minimal materials like uh, exposed to concrete, rubble wall, and uh, the client wanted clean spaces like inside the houses, no gaps and everything. So inside houses, it was all white and grays and everything. So you can see you are sitting inside a garden and the light was controlled in the courtyard to get that uh, nostalgic feel of the house. So it was all about the feeling of the, uh, of the client who is living inside the house. They will feel safe, secured. At the same time, they feel like they are sitting inside nature. So for using the courtyard, we don't want to go to the courtyard. Inside the house itself, we will feel like we are inside the courtyard. So this is the central access. Uh, the inside and outside space is balanced perfectly. The first floor balcony, the, all the bedrooms are focusing towards. You can see the porous nature of the courtyard. Sunlight, rain and everything will be there in the courtyard. So exposed to concreting, exposed plastering, like all the minimal materials, we used wood to attain the traditional value and uh, of the, uh, the theme of the project. The palm wood will get uh, uh, used to the nature, it will get old. The indigenous landscape, this uh, landscape with indigenous plants and everything. The sloping sandwich panel roof, the sap happy client and us. So we would like to end our presentation with the keyword: "A walk with nature will help you to receive more than uh, help you to seek more than you uh, help you to receive more than you seek." Thank you. First of all, let me thank you. The day we visited this house, I think you had to wait for three, four hours, and maybe more even. And then as we left the house,
it was you, I think your partner, and then slowly a whole office came out of the jungle. You know, one by one, and it would not stop. They turned to be 20, 25. By the time I was counting, I thought the whole village came to meet us. <laughs> and it was very touching, I must admit. And I think your architecture is a bit like that. Your architecture, the way it is resolved in many aspects, is uh, a livable organism. Yes, it's more, it actually blurs itself. And that's, I think, your atten intention also, that architecture steps back and the living qualities emerge. And I think you have achieved it very well. And you have achieved it, I think so, because you were brought up in an environment in your childhood that you are able to express now through your skills. And I feel this honesty of, which is, I would uh, tell all the students that when they take their thesis work or they take their dissertations, they should not take an exotic place as their, their playground or as their thesis project. They should actually take what is dear to them. And I feel you, through your work, you are able to actually connect to your past, to yourself. Therefore, the work shows that, the quality. Because generally, if you look at a courtyard house in anywhere in India, um, it is a place which is very predictable, which is very um, straight, straightforward. You, know? you have a courtyard, and we saw that a few projects today, uh, very banal in its expression, very banal in their imagination. They put a fountain, they put a sculpture, and then you are done. For you, the courtyard is actually a very active backdrop, almost backdrop music to what happens outside that, your spaces. And you are right. And I felt that also. I didn't know that you said that at the visit. I don't think you said that. And you're very right. Your courtyard is actually not a courtyard. It is an organism. The, the living happens in the rooms behind because the transparency, the connectivity that you have achieved is actually tangible. One can sense that when, uh, uh, as you walk through the spaces. So without going into details, I think it is an exceptional good model to be emulated and to work upon. Very inspirational work. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with Viren. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, it was uh, uh, it was actually again one of those projects we visited at the fag end of the day, and it was just uh, like it gave us a lot of energy. Apologies for the uh, waiting period, um, and I think it uh, even at this stage, like we are almost at the end of our presentation. So it's it's very nice to have this project at this point, you know, because we've seen a lot of projects talk about and grapple with binaries contemporary or traditional? Do we want to have glare, a lot of light or no light? Do we want to have privacy or access? Do we want to have security? And and that's always like we know it personally and like, uh, uh, you know, the value of some, doing something like this collectively is that uh, when, when the, these struggles are presented to us, sometimes we fall between the cracks and then when you see a project bridge those instead of splitting in a schizophrenic manner, it sort of opens up the horizons for for all of us. Um, and uh, uh, I, I mean, again, like I think uh, there is a value to us being outsiders in that sense. Uh, in Delhi, plants die twice. Once they like literally burn because it's so cold, like they go brown, like something has burnt them. Then there's summer. And in Kerala, the access you have to nature, which really takes care of itself. Uh, one. One would really like to see, like, uh, I mean, you hear about all these biophilic things, which are now new code words, but I was so happy you showed those laterite walls, because I think this was the thing that we also discussed with the Altitude project, that, you know, like, the walls live and breathe, and, you know, in seasons, they change, and then they tone back. So it's really nice to have the, those as references and taking it through. Also, you know, this louvers, I think the selection of material, because, you know, there was this thing, oh, we want modern and traditional materials will be uh, not modern, but yours has a sort of uh, very contemporary vocabulary to it, but again, a grounded earthiness that is off the place, and the material is also off the place. Um, 
I think especially after the photographs that you showed of the pool, which is a really wonderful, I mean, I'll, I'll reiterate everything that Virain said. Uh, it really works for the space, uh, the way it's located. I just felt, and I felt that when I was on site also, it might be difficult to explain this without the plan, but you know, the deck doesn't open into the corridor. It opens into a glass panel. Like it's a fixed glass, the, just the deck part. Ah, yeah, the yeah? Deck part. and that is a little discordant, as is the thing that like while you experience the pool from different directions visually, the deck is the only place to enter it. And you know, like the photos that you sh showed, especially of children, sort of accessing water features from more, I know that the space is tight, but even within that, and Raghura has this lovely image of, uh, you know, a Bauli in Delhi, where the kid is just jumping from some yes, random yes. place no one would expect. Uh, and I wish there was a little more access to the pool from just, you know, even if it's a little thing to go and sit uh, on the side from more than just this very control, like you enter from here to here, turn right, sit, get into the pool. So that is a little bit of an aspect. And I, and I felt like while the courtyard was uh, phenomenal, uh, we also collectively felt that the spaces worked very well in relation to the courtyard, but a little bit more could have been done in the articulation of the dining and the living and what they do just as individuals themselves. But all in all, uh, and, and again, um, I think it's very important, the narrative we build around architecture, not to promote our project, but what it does to a popular imagination or even a professional imagination of architecture. And we really enjoyed the way your photograph project was photographed. It really felt like the people who live in these places are not a hindrance to how it's perceived, you know. Uh, they're not a clutter that has to be removed and choreographed. Um, and also, you know, like you did express the, the way you arrived at the solution in terms of actually the binaries of contemporary and all of it, those choices sort of nicely it was to the service of the project i think so, that is the condition almost yeah. all the architects are facing here yeah maybe we'll be telling about the our celebrated projects and everything but the reality is that right, yeah they will be coming with with, uh, with these ideas and, and you you mentioned about the passage the glass fixer glass and everything that was the last choice i have to compromise on like it was all open but i have to come we have to compromise on many things but that was the last thing i had to compromise in that thank you thank you thank you